Bonjour, Alex. Bonjour, Bonjour, Alex. Hi, my name is Juliana Marcon. I'm a senior consultant uh, in manager. Shadow Show, entrepreneurship consultant here in Moncton and uh, three time participant at the uh, Thank you. Nice to meet you. Now, I'm sure that every single person in this room has destroyed their phone at least once. Personally, I've lost my phone in the toilet, in a hot tub, and under the back wheel of my father's truck. <laughs> there have been many instances when I have needed to have my phone repaired or replaced. Thank you very much. My name is Austin McCarthy, and I'm one-third of FTP Consultant. To my left, I have Rodrigo and Sebastian. We are here to present Case Depot 2021. So now before we get into it, let's look at what our value proposition is. The total capital and operating expenses for our plan is going to cost you $67,800. Now what will this result in? This will result in $750,000 of incremental revenue over the next five years. And a key thing you asked us to look at was the ROI. And we are presenting uh, an ROI of 63% in the first year. And finally, we can see a payback period of 1.3 years, uh, which is a fantastic number for a company like this. Regardons un peu la problématique. Il y a trois principaux éléments sur lesquels on s'est penché. Le, pr le, pr le premier, la reconnaissance de votre marque. Vous êtes nouveau dans un marché et vous avez seulement 10% de reconnaissance de, de marque présentement. Deuxièmement, la compétition. La compétition est féroce. C'est un marché qui est à la fois physique et en ligne. Donc, beaucoup de joueurs, des joueurs autant petits que grands, qui viennent prendre des parts de votre marché. Et finalement, le dilemme de réparer le téléphone ou le remplacer. Les prix bas des, télé des nouveaux téléphones, la nouvelle technologie, ainsi que les coûts plus élevés d'une réparation traditionnelle sont tous des éléments de cette, de, de cette problématique. Je vais pouvoir répondre à vos questions tout au long de cette présentation, autant en anglais qu'en français. So, let's look at our solution for you today. First of all, custom phone cases. This is one of the things that you introduced to us. And it's one of the things that we believe has a major impact. It's going to play a, a significant role for you in the future. Second of all, rapid repair. And this is something that we're really proud to introduce to you today that we came up and that we're going to be talking a little bit uh, further on later. It consists of a phone pickup and drop-off service. And last of all, a marketing campaign. 
Because if your name isn't out there, you simply aren't making sales. So we're going to be targeting university and college students, newspapers, and we're going to have this is whole new, a branded car. So with all of this, throughout our whole process, we want to stress the importance of having also a phone recycling program that's going to be integrated as part of your regular activities. So now let's look at where you are now and where we want to take you. So right now we can see that you currently offer cases, repairs, you sell used and new phones. And this is great, but there's still a missing opportunity. And as we said, there's a constant debate of how do we give the one-shop experience while competing against large retailers and also against individuals who want to buy a new phone instead of getting their, uh, getting their phones replaced. So, we see that we want to give a personalized experience. This is really bringing convenience to the next level. So, here there is a true opportunity to create a complete value offering in Moncton through Cas Depot. Now before we get too into uh, the specifics, let's look at Cas Depot. Let's look at the internals of your company. So first of all, you brand yourself as a one-stop shop. And this is something that we really liked while reviewing the case. Um, you are new to the market. So what does this mean? This means that you have low brand recognition. You stated that uh, under 10% uh, of people in Moncton actually know Cas Depot. And you have limited human capital. Since you're a small company of four employees, this is actually an expansion issue. So once we implement our plan, how will we be able to increase revenues uh, while, be a, while being able to keep your production uh, where it's at? And next we have the extensive product offering. You, as Sebastian mentioned, you have many products that, you're, uh, that you offer to us, and this is an enticing value offering. Next, we can look at the lack of customer retention. There currently is no customer retention program in place, well, specifically in Moncton, which is a smaller community. Uh, this is something that we can really capitalize on and gain more customers. And lastly, the seasonality of the business. Many phone cases and phone purchases happen around December for Christmas, as we know. So this leads to financial instability. So next, let's just look at a quick overview at your financial standing right now to see if our solution and our recommendation is something that you, would help you financially going forward. So we see that you have a very healthy gross margin of 61%, which is very good. We do see that salaries though is a large portion of your expenses. So every month you spend $6,000 on salaries, which is 48% of your total expenses during the month. This is something to keep in check because if you want to expand, the limited human labor capital would make it very expensive to get bigger in certain areas. After that we have phone sales. So we said even though phone sales are 40% of your whole sales, they only account for 40% of your gross margins as can be seen on the smaller table. So we see that selling phones does not make you as much money, but it also allows you to sell services such as the cases or the repairs for your customers. And finally, so we see your projections. So you indicated uh, your targeted growth rates for the next five years. And this is what it would look like with a common annual growth rate of 15%. And later on in the presentation, we'll see the impact of our recommendation on that line. Now let's look at the industry as a whole. So the phone repair industry, it's either repair or replace. My father runs over my phone, what do I do? I can either go to my local shop and replace it, or I buy a new phone. So this is a problem because large providers are there branding in your face all the time. Bell, Videotron, and Telus, they constantly have plans where you can buy phones for virtually no cost as long as you lock into a two-year plan. So this is a competitor that you have to watch out for. And also, uh, phone prices are dropping, as I mentioned. And there is a rise in disposable income, uh, especially in Moncton. Moncton is growing at a rate of 10%. And technology is quickly evolving. This is one more uh, key factor that we concluded because now why would I fix my iPhone 5 if the iPhone 7 is out? And the 50% rule, so this is a rule that we found and this is, it has been observed that if the price uh, of a repair exceeds 50% of the price of a new phone, then uh, the customers tend to buy a new one <coughs> instead of repairing it. You mentioned uh, three different alternatives in the case. The first was the new location, uh, second was online sales, and the third was custom cases. We will be presenting uh, also other growth opportunities. And to measure this, because when you're looking at the alternatives, uh, you always need to have key performance indicators, or sorry, decision, uh, decision criteria, and we came up with the following five. So the alternatives, decisions. First, let's look at opening a new location. 
So what did we see uh, that, was, that was difficult about opening a new location? The first thing that jumped out of us, jumped out at us, was the capital intensity. You are going to spend large amounts of money to open a new location, and we did not find this financially sustainable for where you are at currently. Next, we found the online sales, and what was our big, uh, our big roadblock for online sales? This was competition. As soon as you start selling phone cases online, you're competing with Amazon, eBay, Kijiji, and all the other massive uh, retailers. And since you're a smaller company, uh, you will end up losing the price wars because they can drop you out of the market. So what did we decide to go with? Custom cases. This is something that's really exciting to us because now I can go and brand my school on my phone. This is a fantastic idea and it really separates you from the other uh, competition in the market. All other growth opportunities must be evaluated with the same criteria. So moving forward, we need to look at each decision with the five factors uh, we have noted. So let's look at these custom phone cases that Austin was mentioning. First of all, you, have, you will be purchasing the technology that you told us in the case, and you will be having it on-premises in your shop. So no need for extra expenditure to have it done elsewhere or to rent an additional facility to do it. Second of all, this will provide you the best margins. Currently, your best margins are around 75%, while this will provide an extra 5%. We believe that an 80% margin is so healthy that it is too big to pass on. Third of all, it will create quick brand recognition through word of mouth. Simply having that nice case that sticks out onto the desk that you're looking at and you say, I've never seen that one before. Where did you get it? Well, I got it at case shop. They can get something for you that's unique, that you will love, and that you will be able to carry with you throughout the day. So through all of this, we believe that custom phone cases will create a major differencing factor that is going to keep you one step ahead of the competition. And this is a non-neglectable thing. So let's look at rapid repair now. And this is the thing that we came up today and we're really proud to introduce. First of all, it is a phone pickup service with a 20 kilometer radius around your shop. As you can see at the middle of this current map, your shop is listed. We, took the, the, we pinpointed the exact location on Google Map. We had the 20 kilometer radius, as you can see, for a regular interval for your driver that will be doing this, these pickups. The customer will receive his phone either in store or he will get it delivered to his place. We established that a repair can be done in between 48 hours, but not all of them. Let's be honest here. Some repairs will need more time, either if you're changing a battery that has run out of stock or you're ordering simply a, a screen that's more hard to find. At this point, we will assess if there is need for a part that is more hard to find or if the repair requires more time. So if there's special repairs or missing part, this delay will be enhanced and the customer will receive a call or email detailing it. So let's look at how it works. So first of all, you, the customer is going to place an email or a call to your shop. He's going to want to book this amazing product. Second, the driver is going to come to the location and pick up the, at the desired place and time. If you're at work and your screen cracked, or if you're at home and your dad run it over, <laughs> you're going to need to have that service provided to you. Third of all, the device is repaired by your trained technicians. And we don't want to rush this. We could have come up with an alternative of having your technician going in his car and simply trying to get it fixed in your car. But that's not what you want. You provide a quality service and want to stress the importance of bringing your device back to your trained technicians that are on your premises. Fourth, the call is made to the customer to ensure him his device is being take care, taken care of and most of all that, the, uh, that it is ready to uh, um, pick up. If the case is that there is a longer delay, we will inform him at this time. Fifth, the customer is going to get the device delivered to his place or he will have the option of coming to pick it up in store. By having the option of having the, uh, our customer come in store, we will increase case sales or additional products. And if we have the, if the customer comes in and gets the product inside your store, sorry, if the customer gets the product delivered to his place, at this point, he will also have to pay an, ad, an additional flat fee. So let's look at the driver. First of all, you will purchase a car, a car we'll be talking about in our financial analysis. So your driver will be driving the company car. He's not specialized. 
So we'll be paying an industry average salary, which is just above the minimum salary here in uh, New Brunswick. And he's going to be processing payments along the way. He'll get there, simply pay with credit card or debit card, and collect the money for your company. So throughout of this, we're going to be keeping the costs low while generating a huge new revenue stream for your business. So let's look at our phone recycling program. Two important metrics that we kept along the way. First of all, 140 million cell phones end up in landfill annually. And this is an amazing number. This is something that we believe we can, we can do and have an impact on and reduce that number. Second of all, some pieces are still useful but disregarded by the user. The user doesn't know if it's the microprocessor that went wrong, if it's the battery, or simply a dead pixel in the middle of the screen. By using our expertise and by being able to have these phones brought back to us, we'll be able to collect such pieces and sell them to the people that are going to be needing them. We're going to be also creating a program where people can recycle their phone. So simply a box where the people will drop their phone and we'll be able to use this phone and give them to proper authorities who will dispose of them safely to ensure once again that these phones don't end up in landfills. So now our marketing strategies. Three main marketing strategies that we stress throughout our whole implementation. First of all, we want to double your marketing budget. You're a company that's expanding. You're currently spending $2,000 monthly on marketing. And we want to stress the importance of having brand awareness. Get your name out there. So this is why we want to double your budget. We want to transfer the sponsorship money for, uh, in, for a presence on the University of Moncton campus. We want year-round promotions. Some promotions that we came up with are simple as bring two cell phones for a pair and get a total of 20% off. This will simply knock 10% off your margins on each phone and still keep a 65% margins on your current, on your current repairs. Free walk-in screen cleaning with every purchase. And this is really, really, really simple. Simply offering the product of having someone that's walking by the street already purchased something in the past from your store, give them a quick cleanup. Take his phone, take the case out, two pushes, remove that and it's done. Last of all, branding the rapid repair car. And your car is gonna be one of your main marketing tools. By having your car branded with a sticker, a non-pain damaging ad adhesive, you will be able to move your car throughout the city, get your brand out there, get your name out there, and have people ask questions to what you do. And this is really what you want to increase your business in the future. So now let's look at our implementation over here. All right. So you asked for us for a five-year plan. However, it is a business and our recommendation is very intensive over the first two years and this will allow and continue it to grow for you to gain a relative market share among your other major competitor and the large retailers. So if you look at our timeline, we see that first of all, we want to hire a new employee right away. As Rodrigo mentioned, this will increase the amount of repairs necessary because mm -hmm. of our new car program and it, you did specify it takes six to eight months to train a new employee. So we want to make sure that we hire them right away so we're ready to get this new employee into the store and repairing more phones as the quantity increases when we launch our rapid repair system. Sorry. Secondly, we want to obviously purchase a new car that will allow the driver to kind of drive around. This allows us to, as Rodrigo mentioned, brand it and have people seeing this weird fancy car with weird painting and colors around and they'll kind of be intrigued to want to learn a little bit more about what it is. It was, we saw that it was very important uh, to educate people about the repair versus replace problem. So we really want to ensure that people see the value in repairing their phone and just not throwing it out. There's a large misconception that repairing a phone is four or five hundred dollars, but sometimes it's as simple as replacing a sixty dollar button. It's just that the consumers don't necessarily know how accessible and how affordable it can be and choose to buy a completely new phone that can range up to a thousand dollars. Moving forward, we want to launch the rapid repair, again as mentioned, as soon as the driver is ready to go. After this, we want to ensure that we have our marketing campaign on campus, in the newspapers, to get people and continue to educate them about the repair process and why it's beneficial to you as a customer. And then we have the phone recycling program. So again, we want to let people know how harmful it can be. 140 million phones are discarded into land waste every single year. These components have toxic components, chemical components, but they also throw away gold and silver that's used for conductors within the phone. So not only can you scrape money and take parts for you to use on other people's phones or to sell to people who need this, but you're also having a long-lasting environmental impact uh, on society. 
So now let's talk about the financial implications of the delivery. So first of all, we did a semi-cost-benefit uh, analysis on what it would cost us for the driver. So we would charge consumers $10, close to nothing, and it affords so much convenience. People don't have to worry about, oh yeah, I worked late today, I'll do it tomorrow. You simply call or send a request and somebody picks up your phone, goes, fixes it, and 48 hours later, you're good to go again. Then there would be a $4 and $5 pick, uh, sorry, delivery fee. So what this allows us to do is some people might not want to pay that fee. And a percentage of our consumers will say, you know what, I'll just pick it up on my drive home. And through this, we're increasing foot traffic. As we saw in your financials, a huge part of your success is bundling sales. So the ability to upsell and, you know, somebody comes in for a repair and you give them a brand new case. Or they come in on a repair and it's too expensive and you sell them a refurbished phone. Getting customers inside your store along with our marketing campaign of getting 20% off when you come together, will really allow people to come as teams, as people, and get the word out there, but also get them in their store to boost sales. So the driver's salary, approximately $11 an hour, a bit above minimum wage, but it could be just a simple university student who has a couple hours left. We see that this is something, we don't think that this is something that would be hard to convince or get for. And then these are the following hours. So we really want to limit the hours. Again, we see that salaries are close to 50% of your total expenses. So we want to keep it relatively stable. This is why he would work approximately 10 hours a week during peak periods when people are getting home from work. So now let's talk about the actual numbers. Sure, it can be a very pretty idea, but is it going to make us money at the end of the day? So most importantly, we have the custom cases as well as the rapid repair. So the custom cases are specified at $40 and the rapid repair at an average of $12.50 for consumers who pick delivery <coughs> and some of them who pick it up at the store. So we assume that we can sell 500 units in the first year and have 100 phones that use our rapid repair process. These numbers are relatively low because this would be being launched halfway through the year after we've trained our technician. So we've accounted for that seven month gap of training that we wouldn't have to sell the phones. So in total, we see additional revenues of $20,000, which is considerable, but later we'll see that the biggest advantage from this is the spillover effect <coughs> into your other revenue streams. So you're gonna have increased store traffic, increase in repairs and the numbers of phones coming into your store, and also increase in store traffic. I apologize for that one. Uh, so we see here an incre incremental revenue graph. So the light blue shows us how much more sales you'll make compared to the line we saw in the beginning. So initially you had a compound annual growth rate of 15% and this will enable you to have one of 22% which is considerably bigger. This will allow you to scale up your business to a whole new level. So in capital expenditures, we'll be buying the car as well as the machine which will cost you $27,000 out of your $40,000 of, cap of capital expenditure money. And then we'll have the increased expenses which will be done through your operations. So you won't necessarily be spending all of it at once, you'll only be spending $27,000 at once from the 40 provided. What this will result in, is gonna be first year incremental sales. So compared, if you do nothing, and then if you do our recommendation, you would sell $42,000 more worth of revenue. The payback period is 1.3 years. So we do see that it's very profitable and it would allow you to get your money back and have free cash flow to continue growing in the future. Over the five year period, it's gonna be incremental sales of $750,000 and your return on your investment during just the first year is gonna be approximately 63%. So to conclude, at the beginning, we saw that the three main problems were brand awareness. Not many people know who you are, less than 10%. By getting marketing efforts out there, having the car, being the universities, this will remedy that problem and get people in the city to know about what you do. Also, the custom phone cases, which will be really cool. Again, you, you, you can have your favorite picture, your phone. If you're really cheesy, you can have your boyfriend, girlfriend on the cover. <laughs> People will see this and they'll get the idea. It's not something that can be done easily. And online, it's not something that people trust very much. Thank you. Then we see competition. By being different, by providing that convenience of literally picking it up at your house, people will be that, mu that much more, sorry, more willing to use your product because how easy it is. We all have very stressful lives, we're running all over the place. This really makes it far more easier. And finally, repair versus replace. Again, by educating them, showing them how things are done, people will know that repairing is sometimes much better than replacing. Thank you very much, and we open the floor to any questions. So in your
22% incremental growth that you guys are showing in your chart, um, are you taking into consideration the fact that they're going to start using some used parts for repairs, or was that neglected, or was that counted into the 22% that you already ca calculated? Yeah, so what we've done is uh, we increased our expenses. Oh, sorry. Uh, we increased our expenses according to. Uh, let's see. Sorry, two seconds. No, it's perfect. And there, uh, sorry about that. There we go. So, yeah, we compared our total sales, and then in our income statement, we also projected the amount of savings we would get from using parts and also the new operating margin, the 80% for selling our custom phone cases. Okay, thank you. How would I, like, why would I buy um, a personal uh, personalized case uh, in store if I can buy it like online from uh, a computer? Let's just say that this phone case makes a great gift. You're running late, you had a busy week, and this case is right there. If you want to have it delivered online, one, you're not 100% sure that it's going to fit. If you have it on your hand in stores, you're 100% assured that it's going to fit. You don't have to deal with the whole, um, fact of having to return it, maybe it goes back to China, comes back, maybe it's damaged. Here you get a quality product that's going to be delivered to you hand-on and that is quickly delivered and you know, you rest assured that your product is going to be a good one. Okay, so you compare it to a bad experience online? It could be or simply the fact that you're running out of time, simply the fact that a product that comes from far will have to be customized there, then shipped maybe from probably from overseas and then we'll have to deal with the mail service from your local community to get to your door. So there is, there is a far extensive process compared to the simple process of taking your car and driving to your great store. Is it a concept that already exists that pick up uh, at home and is it a concept that you guys found online? Or no, this is actually something that we generated and the fantastic part with this approach is that no other company in Moncton is doing this right now. So you mentioned a competitor which has uh, recently been in the market for eight years, mm -hmm. and he does not do this. So it's a large uh, window for opportunity. So when I do get uh, my phone picked up, I know you guys considered the cost for uh, the, the, the pickup mm -hmm. service. What about the analysis back at the shop? So does that $10 cover both of those expenses of of your staff or? So through that $10, basically what we want to do, we want to increase people having the repair at your shop. Usually that $10 is going to cover a large part of the driving fee and also going to co cover a small part of the analysis fee, as you said. So there is usually a part of the analysis fee that will be lost if the customer decides to not proceed with the repair. But we're confident that with the healthy margins we, we provide to you today, this cost will be absorbed really quickly. Yeah. So there's no fee for the analysis? Absolutely not. Okay. Cool. First bilingual uh, presentation too. So. <laughs> <laughs>